right, y'all. Welcome back to yet another episode of I'm Down. I'm your host, George. It's your boy, Al, man. And we got a very special guest today with us. Um, oh, wait. I forgot, man. You know, Jay just gave me the sign. Yo, you forgot me. My bad. And we got Jay in the back doing this thing. Uh, once again, we got Julio helping us out. Appreciate you, bro. That's Zone 4 Visuals, by the way. So y'all tap in uh, Zone 4 Visuals and what he's sure. doing. Appreciate you, man, for helping us. Like I said, we have a very special guest today. Um, her, she goes by Melanie. Um, tell us if you want to introduce yourself a little bit, talk just a little bit about yourself before we get into, I guess, the questions and stuff. Yeah. Okay. Hey, yeah. yeah. My name is Melanie. Um, so I am a startup as a fashion designer. I am designing currently for women's wear. Uh, I work for a fashion company. Um, what else do I do? I do several other things. Uh, I also have a YouTube channel where I mm -hmm. kind of just show people the process of designing the process of kind of like my journey of entrepreneurship so that's just where i'm at right now currently with what i do so so well, well okay so i i was i was looking at your site of course right and i was seeing you do custom made pieces for you know your your audience right do you do girls and guys it, it doesn't matter it's right now it's focused on girls right right now it's for women's wear um so i'm focusing custom made which is essentially getting just the measurement of the person's body and creating something for her. Yeah. Uh, I do also freelance. I've had many freelancers as well where they wanted to create something unique, something just exquisite for them for a particular uh, outing or something. Yeah. So what I would do is just kind of like do a sketch, get some references of what they want or what they're looking for, and then I take it from there and we create something together. Mm, okay, that's oh dope. God, like that. yeah. So okay, so this is the thing, right? So I see is is deep into girls, and that's that's like I think I think because my girls always into like fashion, looking at fashion pieces and stuff like that. So I understand that crowd. How do you even get into that? Like, how how did you like even begin to like start with the clothing stuff? What got you into it? What made you interested? 2018, I came to a realization that I wanted to work on something on my own, and I decided that. You know, like, it took me quite some time because I knew I didn't want to work on something that I didn't feel passionate for. I was in between finishing, you know, my associates, which I did. I finished my associates. I never went back to school after that. And I was, you know, I didn't want to have just, like, a normal 9 to 5 job anymore. I think I was just kind of fed up creating someone else's dreams. Yeah. I wanted to do something for my own. I wanted to build something on my own. So the thought of, of having the brand started in 2018. So from there, I basically just, it was a thought and 2020 is when I started putting the website together, is when I started putting like some merchandise out. Um, but it, it took some time. It wasn't something that I woke Always. up and decided to say, you yeah, know what, yeah, like yeah. I'm gonna create a website, boom. I'm gonna make a garment, boom. Yeah. It's not, it was not like that. Something that someone has like, if you're into entrepreneurship, I'm gonna have to tell you like, I'm going to be really honest and brutal. You're going to have to enjoy the process. This is not mm. something that you can just immediately Overnight, say, yeah. oh, yeah, I'm going to do it and jump into it. Like, I'm sure you guys would also understand that with your podcast. But that it takes time. It's a journey. Yeah. You're going to have to literally, like, I had many days where I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing. You know, yeah. like, I don't know where I'm going. I don't know how to even start with this. But I just took it day by day and I, you know, 2020 was the year that I decided my name uh, or the brand's name because the brand is called Dine, which is my middle name. Mm -hmm. um, and I did the website and I have some few custom pieces that I just have on my uh, shop as of right now. So yeah. it was a journey. It was, it was a process for sure. Yeah. No, and, and I, I, I could tell that, right? Because you also, I saw your blog, right? You also have a blog within your site, um, which you actually talk and you really openly talk to, you know, your your peoples, right? Yeah. Like your, your viewers and stuff mm -hmm. and your readers. And... So a, a, a lot of that, and I understand that, right? Because right now I'm, I'm in the same process trying to write a blog, right? We have this, uh, the I'm down thing. So I get the frustrations and things. How do you even handle when that comes? Because you said it's a process, right? You have to and love right. the journey. So within that process, you have a lot of shit that you have to deal with. So yeah. do you, do you, are you like aware of what part in the process you're in? Like, I am. Like I are you am. at the beginning? Are you in the middle or somewhere? Oh, no. I am so in the beginning. Okay. And the thing that I like to do the most, and this is something that I create for myself um, weekly, is like I self-analyze myself. Mm -hmm. I don't, yeah, that's good. you know, like 
there's no bullshit for myself. I'm very honest with myself. I, if I need to self-assess myself, I'll see, for example, if I have X amount of things I have to do in the week and I didn't complete it, I was like, okay, I see what I did. I see what I didn't do. I don't, I don't BS myself. I'm very honest. And I think That's you good. have to be very honest with yourself. But so, yeah, I, I, truly, I truly see where I'm at. And I'm only just, I'm not even touching the surface yet. I think there's so much more to what I want to bring to. But it's, it's, honestly, it's tough. Honestly, it's tough. Yes. And just yeah, to kind is. of like start something from the ground, it's mm -hmm. not the easiest. I don't really have assistance as of right now. Eventually, I want to bring in a, a, a good, solid team to help me with the brand. But it's something that... You got to trust them, though. Yeah. You, trust them. It's not, you can't bring anybody into something <laughs> you that can't. you're trying to create because it's very easy for them to just it's fuck it baby. all up. Exactly. It's my baby. So that, that's the thing where I'm... Yeah, I'm... I have to trust the process. I have to be really honest with myself, and I like to self-analyze myself. Was it was it always close? Was it always close? Was it something that was like, all right, I'm gonna do close? Well, fun fact: I've always wanted to do uh, designing, whether it was interior, Anything? interior, or not so much graphic, but it was more like interior or like fashion. Because this really started when I was probably young. Very young. It always starts young. Because you haven't, yeah, it's young. always so, yeah. I was stuck in my room. Like, I was a kid that I was just stay stuck in my room. And my mom and dad would have to constantly check up on me to see if I was okay. But I was just literally in my own world. I had a bunch of magazines. I was cutting out pictures of magazines, creating collages, yeah, making a storyboard. Yeah. And that was just, like, I would put it in a binder. I had a binder full of just, like, different ideas, different mood boards, different sketches. That's where it really came from. And when, to back in 2018, when I decided to take this and take it seriously, like, I had to sit myself and be honest, like, where, what do I truly want? Like, what do I truly want to, like, accomplish, aspire? And it went down to that. Well, uh, so I heard you say it twice already. 2018 is what made you, like, want to really do it. What, what happened? Because usually what happens is, and I, I've seen this a lot, right? We go through things in life. And we need to like sometimes look at those dark places, being that dark place to really understand, all right, this is what I need to do. This is what I got to get done. Because, you know, when we're comfortable, it's very hard for you to really want to do to get something done. You know, yeah. what, what was it for you then? What, what experience did you go through that made that, or 2018, maybe before that made you feel like, all right, that's it. I got to take this step. I don't want to work for somebody else no more. I don't, the school, maybe school wasn't for you. What, what, was the, what, what was that ignite that happened in your life? As prior, like the th like the thought yeah, that like like right before, like you know, you decided, oh, I'm gonna go for it. What made you like say this? I'm gonna go for it. Well, I was really unhappy with my job. I was working with um, a home health agency. I was the you know I was doing human resources with them, and I I enjoy school. I learned a lot from school, but I nece I knew that school. It was, was the just answer. yeah. It it was just a tool. It was just a tool for me to get to know people and tools that I needed, like, for example, my textbooks, because I did business administration. Um, so I, I mm. used those tools to help me kind of, like, create this vision for myself. I was like, you know what? I'm going to be honest. I don't like where I'm at. I don't like what I'm doing. I'm going to figure out what I want to do for the rest of my uh, not. I don't want to say for the rest of my life, I guess, because I don't know what can happen from here on on. But I did want to create something from scratch. I wanted something of my own. And fashion just came in because it was just something that I, I literally sat down with myself, meditated, wrote in my journal, be, and just really honest with myself. I keep emphasizing that. You have to be really honest with yourself. And I just decided that I wanted to do fashion. I wanted to be part of the community. And I wanted to make a difference in the fashion industry. So uh, from there, I just took on. And then from, the, from 2018 to 2019, because uh, that was towards the end of 2018 that I wanted to do this. And then towards like 2019, like that whole year itself, yeah. I just started learning. I started learning how to sew. I started learning how to do pattern making. I didn't go to school for any of this. You self-taught? You YouTube? Yeah. yeah. You just found it on YouTube, uh, self-taught. Yeah. I had a roommate when I was living in downtown. She taught me the basics of how to sew. Mm. And I just implemented those skills and I started practicing and started watching YouTube videos. And that's just kind of how it went down, really. Yeah. And I just practiced that whole year. Okay. So 
I, I and I, I actually relate to that a little bit, right? Because I was just saying, Jay, this. I was like, I feel like everything I've learned, like skill wise, like that, that I probably apply even like back in the day, I used to dance, like back in high school. All of that was through YouTube, right? And so one thing that we push a lot here is, yo, school is not for us, right? Like, like for me, Jay, we talk about that. I'm, I'm sure you feel the same way, right? It just wasn't for us. It didn't feel like, you know, this is what I want to do. I don't learn it in out. the we school didn't see it scenario. As an out. Like, it wasn't out. Yeah, it, it, it just didn't fit in, right? So a lot of things that, that especially like having these kind of conversations with somebody who's just starting, what I like is that you're not big yet. What happens, I feel like when you get real big, you forget a lot of like the little things that got you to where you are, right? So let's say somebody new right now, maybe it's a young girl, 16, 14 years old, whatever, watching right now. What advice would you give them? Maybe they want to start in fashion that you've been through so far, right? Because you're just starting your journey that... You, you could probably give them advice on how to handle or what's going to come from this. I don't know if you have any. Yeah, um, I would say have clarity. Have clarity of what you want to do. And don't rush. There's no need to rush. If you're going mm. to design, if you're going to have any sort of business, it's going to flourish. Whether it be a year, of five years, or in two, three months, it will flourish. Just be authentic, be yourself, do something that you love. And I would like to say that uh, I, I kind of hate when people say, oh, find your passion, find your passion. I think that's bullshit. I you really, should have it already. I, I don't think people always have passions. Like fashion was just kind of a thing that I enjoyed doing when I was young. Um, but I have other passions. Mm, you know, I have gotcha. other passions as well. Like, I don't necessarily think that you should just chase after a passion. Chase what you be- like. If there's something that you want to change into the world, do that. If you have a hobby, do that. If there's something that sparks joy to you, do that. And just go after it and see where it takes you. I guess that's what I would say. And yeah. just slow down. There's no rush. There's no need to rush. I think that was my thing. I was always rushing as well. Mm. And that's, I think, I think that's real common, right, with all of us. I think that that's, like, the curse we have in our 20s is, like, yo, you got to, we got to get shit done, right? Like, yo, I'm not where I'm supposed to be, right? Like, and a lot of it has to do with social media. You could say, like, you know, you're watching maybe, like, your own peers, people your own age group, accomplish, like, some big things for their age. We kind of feel a little bit like that. Maybe not FOMO, but, like, yo, are we not tapping into what we're, are we not where we're supposed to be at, right? And so I, I, that, that's one thing that I'm really big on is, is time. Like, yo, take your time. Like, you're not supposed to, like, all of that, oh, you're supposed to, you're supposed to, you're supposed to does not exist. No, exactly. Like, that shit is bullshit, right? Like, I mean, we're having this conversation with Julio the other day um, about, like, 30s. Like, he feels a little bit different than I do, right? For him, he wants to be at a certain place by the time he's 30. But... That scenario is so different to me because you have a certain goal and you have your why. You get me? Like when you have a real why, even if your why is bullshit, right? Some people have their why, I just want a big car and girls and, and parties, whatever, right? If that's your why and that's what drives you, cool. But a lot of people don't have a why. A lot of people just have the, oh, well, I guess I'm supposed to be here by 30 because I see everybody by the time they're 30, they have their shit together. Or, right. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. So in, in, in the process that you're in, because you're saying you're right at the beginning, what would you say, though, you still want to accomplish? Because you said you have a lot to accomplish, right? What else? Because, and, and again, you're not, chasing, you're not chasing your passion per se, right? Because you're saying passion could be, because I get you're saying, that could be fleeting. You get right. me? We could have a new passion right now. You could have a passion for working out. You get me? Right. It doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to make a business out of it or anything, right. right? Sometimes we just have passions. That's just what we like. What else do you feel like you need to accomplish in this game, in, in this fashion game and in, in life, what, you, what you're trying to do? Uh, I'm a strong believer in creating network. Uh, group okay. of people that can support you. I think that once you have a great community, an audience that feel you, that understand you, that see your growth, that understands that you know you're starting from the bottom and you're working your way to the top. I think that's very crucial. I think that's very like you need a solid foundation. You need that cult. You, ex- <laughs> you need that cult. I that cult. think you need that solid foundation in order to just grow because. The truth of the matter is we live in a society that everything is based off on social media and anyone could be pretty much anything that they want. And that's kind of the beauty of like Mm. the like what we have now. Yeah, Yeah. I think that's the beauty of all of this. And so when you create and when you find that niche of people that really support you and help you, 
I think you'll be solid enough to just create good content. Yeah. Content that truly matters to you. Content that truly, like, is coming from the core, from your soul. And people are going to like that. People are going to tune in. People gonna are going to, gravitate like, towards that. Yeah, gravitate towards that. Sure. So I, I think that's very important. I, I would have to say I would like to create more of a network, um, get more people mm. understanding the the concept of my brand because... I believe one thing of fashion while a lot of people believe in other things of fashion. So uh, if I could just get like a good solid niche for, for what, pe- what I stand for and, and what, if people support that, then I think that would be really great. And that's all I need, honestly. That's, that's all I need. Dope, dope. When it comes to your clothing line, are you only going to stay with like uh, clothing? Or are you not going to try dibble dab in like shoes, wallets, uh, earrings, any, any o- the other stuff? Right. Gonna yeah, I as of now I'm doing clothes. Um, who knows what can happen in the future? I don't really necessarily plan out too far. I don't like to do that. I don't really oh, like God. to plan out too far. I think we forget and we lose sight of what's going on right now. Oh, okay. So I like to focus on. Yeah, I'm not saying that I don't have like huge goals. Yeah, I have huge goals like pie in the sky goals. Of course I do. But I like to really focus on the achievables yeah what what i can do within a year so i have this system set up and it's kind of funny it's kind of cheesy but this is how i do it like i do yearly goals and from the yearly goals i divide it by monthly goals and from those monthly goals i do it i do like a to-do list uh every day of how can i achieve those monthly goals so that's kind of the way i would work and I do that for personal, I do that for business, I do that for anything. I think that's kind of how I'll accomplish um, my, my goals from that sense. You have them written down somewhere in front of you, so you see them every oh, day? Oh, I have it in my, in my journal, in my planner. Yeah, I do really every good. single morning, every I'm single, writing. Yeah, every single morning, fun. I write in my planner, I write in my journal, I, you know, I pray. I, I have a solid like, routine that keeps me pretty productive, that keeps my creative juices flowing, that gets me inspired if anything as well i think that you need some you need that structure i always tell people you should have like a morning routine or a night routine or both yeah i think yeah. that's very important mm-hmm. i'll tell you what though she got it though she got the <laughs> she got the system down man she's gonna, she gonna do something i'm trying trying out you here. say you pray so um it's safe to say you're a spiritual person i am yeah talk, talk to me about that uh yeah i was i was born uh, I was raised in Christianity. I, I didn't really like the religions. Not to say that I, I'm against God or anything. I love God. I have my own relationship with God. Um, but then I came into, then a different religion came into my life, um, which is called Yoruba, which is an African religion. What's, what's, what's really, it's called, well, it's known here in Miami like Santeria. Okay. So it's an African religion. It's a very beautiful religion. Um, so I, use them and talk to them and communicate with them in the mornings and nights and and just really like feel my spiritual need up because if i am spiritually Mm -hmm. filled i feel like i can accomplish things and how did you find out about that religion what gravitated to you um so it started off with a little bit on it didn't start with a santeria it started with a different uh version of the religion called palo and it's a it's an african religion as well and i we were introduced that by my stepdad when I was about 11 years old. Um, I found it extremely fascinating, extremely fascinating. And it was just like powerful, the way that we would do like cleansing, like cleanings and the way that we would do, you know, uh, rituals. And if we needed to prep something for like a big event, like we would use the religion and, and the source of like spirituality to help us become better i guess so mm. it kind of started that way all right so so w- walk me through this a little bit if you can right yeah so what i know from santeria right because uh, the same way i was raised christian so what what i've always heard from santeria was you know sacrifices and like I don't know, animal sacrifices and you worship the devil and whatever right so excuse my ignorance because no, 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 I'm, no. yeah, I'm not sure no, but maybe you could that's fine um yeah our religion has a very very negative connotation and I'm actually really glad to talk about it here in the podcast with you guys. That's cool. You got, you got, you got yeah. the floor. Yeah, you got the floor. You got the floor. Um, Figure shit out. 
I, I truly feel bad for the religion because there is many negative connotations to the religion because the religion's used in just mostly for negative ways. You know, people do lots of witchcraft that is to hurt, harm, uh, or break other people, and, and whether it be work, whether it be relationship, whether it be like personal life or business life. And I just think that's very unfortunate. I think, again, it could be with any religion, like, you're always going to have your pros and cons with religion. But that's just kind of like what we see. Media always... Puts us in negative. Always. Media always and society always... I don't know why. We're just so... Gravi- like We gravitate to the negative side of things. We gravitate to like the, yeah. the cons of things. I think it's just because of the hype. I think it's just because it's, it's a way to start conversations. Yeah, the, 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 there's a saying... Uh, Char- you know Charlemagne? Yeah. Yeah. There's a saying he says, "No one cares about the truth when the lie is more interesting." Yeah. So I feel like that's usually how everyone kind of handles their thing, right? It's yeah. like everyone tries to stir up the water some way, somehow. So that that, that controversy kind of calls on people, and I think we kind of feed off that if you think about it. Like, yeah. like whenever you hear anybody go through drama in school, or like you know when you're in school or anything like that, usually people are like, "Oh, what happened? What happened over here? Like, oh, who fought? You know?" So. For some reason, it's that conflict, right? It's, it's just that conflict. Like, right. it's, it's, how does that get resolved? Where does that go? I think that's right. why people are, like, so driven yeah. towards that. Yeah. But, yeah, like, I, I've heard other people say before, like, no, Santeria isn't about, like, devil worship or, um, no. or like, weird, you know, the shit that I hear, I guess. You get me? Like, all right. this the, the weird stuff, it, it's another side to it. I guess you could just use it in both ways. Yeah. That's, that's what it is? Yeah, I mean... Like, so, like, how religion, do you practice, I guess? It, I, it's just communicating with my spirit guides, okay. you know, tending to our rituals, and whether it be just, like, lighting up a candle, talking to them, spending some quality time, and just interacting and just asking for guidance, protection. Um, I, it's, it's any religion, and every religion has spirituality within it. And that's, that's just kind of, like, that's how I use my religion. Um, in terms of, like, killing, like, devil worshipping and killing, killing chickens, chickens and this and that. <laughs> yeah. um, like, we don't worship the devil. There's the, our religion, there's no devil in our religion. Mm-hmm. There's not. There's it, no, like, Satan and that there, There's no, like... So where does that, that come from? Like, where's all the rumors? I have no idea. I have no idea. Really? But there's, there's no devil in my yeah. religion. We have, like, very strong uh, spirits. We have, like, really strong muertos, which is, like, the, the other side of the Yeah, like spectrum. saints. Is it like exactly. saints? That's what it is? Yeah. Oh, it's like, kind of like Catholics, like how they run the okay, thing? Okay, so basically what happened was that um, when the slaves were being brought from British... They basically wanted to keep the religion, yeah. Uh, but they hide their religion with using like Catholic saints. Mm. So that's just that. That's very that's interesting that you brought up. So yeah, basically, okay. so like every saint in our religion, there's also the same for the Catholicism religion. Is it like what, like the opposite though, or it's is the, same. It the same thing? It's the same. Oh, it's just like hidden. They yeah. They named it different to, to just to hide them gotcha. because they weren't allowed to practice Yoruba during that time. Yeah, yeah, yeah of course. Yeah, you, yeah. you have to practice whatever your master. Exactly. Have yeah, you, gotcha. Have you seen anything Shit. supernatural then? Um, I've seen some stuff. <laughs> I've done some stuff that I can't really mention, <laughs> but uh, it's nothing too like crazy. Like no, you I you haven't don't. seen some shit like ooh, that was scary. I'm not gonna um, do that. Well, I mean, I I don't know. I I guess like. I've been really like when I was when I started with the religion I there was like this ritual that they had done and it just kind of helped me enhance and be more aware Mm -hmm. and I and be more sensitive I think when someone is sensitive not necessarily like emotions but sensitive with their surroundings you catch on things quicker when someone is not as sensitive you're not gonna catch up things I read a book or I, I read a book and there was basically, it was just like this little paragraph and they were basically saying, and animals are highly sensitive. Yeah. And they were, they were basically saying, someone that's not like insensitive, not to say that they're not sensitive, but someone that's insensitive yeah. will probably go into a room and pick up like 50%, like 50% of information, data around their environment yeah. as opposed to someone that mm. is sensitive. You go into somewhere and they'll pick up like, 500 things and I think that was very interesting so whether it be it's more than just like sight 
you know, smell, hear, but other people have like this gift where they can see, yeah. where they can like feel like, I don't know if you ever had like these chills. It's like that intuition. Yeah. That's just being like very sensitive to those things. I, don't, I think that someone that is not sensitive won't really feel that. So it's not for everyone. Yeah, it's, 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 it's in other words like intuitive, being intuitive. Yeah, in other words, that's, right? That's the word. Yeah, that's yeah, being very, very connected. And yeah. and one thing I've actually noticed too was you're also deeply into your femininity, right? And yeah. into the divine femininity. Now I've heard this before, um, especially with girls, right? Like I always feel like girls focus on that divine femininity for themselves. I've never heard or barely heard them talk about men f- trying to figure out their or trying to dive into their divine femininity. Do you have any like context to that? Um, yeah, I actually would. I used to watch a lot of YouTube video about it because I felt that for myself, I felt very masculine. And I think that in this society where we're at now, women have to be a little bit more masculine mm. just because of work, you know, and we have all that issue of women getting paid less, um, women getting stepped on at work or, yeah. you know, like oh, they're, horrible they're easy. Yeah, they're yeah. easy praise. So we all, whether you're a man, woman, or whatever you consider yourself, we all have those two energies. We have a masculine energy and we have a feminine energy. I don't mm-hmm. care. You have it as well. You have feminine energy within you as well. So it's a, it's a matter of just kind of finding that balance. Um, I, like, if hanging out with friends, probably, like, they'll say, this girl's not that feminine. But when I'm at home, I like to have that sense of me because femininity is, is a very powerful thing. I think that if a woman or a man necessarily knows how to use it, they can really enhance their life. And what I mean by femininity, I don't necessarily, don't think of it the color pink, roses and stuff like that, no. It's the way you talk to people, it's the way you romanticize things, it's the way you persuade things. It's the way of how you can, it kind of sounds fucked up, is how do you manipulate people? Mm. How do you like grab them in, gra- like be gravitational to something, have something come to you? That's all, that's feminine energy. That's not masculine. And women are very intuitive, men as well, but men that are a little bit more intuitive than other women, that means that just, they just have a little bit more of that oomph of the femininity. Mm. That's what it is. It's just a matter of balance. M- like masculine, more logical, reasoning, women, intuitive. Uh, emotional there has to be some sort of healthy balance in between those two and that's kind of where I really want to uh, like that's why I like to that's what I'm bringing into my clothing brand I want to be very feminine um, just because that's kind of like my taste as well Uh, and then maybe down the road we'll do a different collection but Yeah. yeah I think that's very important for everyone to have Learn how to balance your feminine and masculine energy. It's going to take you very far in life. So how, how have you been able to incorporate that um, for yourself? So I, uh, at work, and it's kind of sad, cause, but it's kind of the truth. Like, I have a lot of masculine energy at work. Are you bossy. Yeah, I have Ooh. to be. I have to be. Well, when you say masculine energy, what, what does that, like, what, what do you mean by that? I'm very assertive. I'm very, att- mm. like, attentive. I very logical you know like if things have to like if i have to put my foot down in a situation i'll be the first one to do it so You're not scared yeah You're i'm not, not. Scared I'm, I'm, no not at all so i have a good like energy for that yeah um and it's very draining for me mm. it's very draining for me like i don't constantly want to have to do that like i don't constantly have yeah. to like you know just walk on top of like people eggshells and stuff just to make sure that everything is running smoothly or having to, you know, probably put someone's in place or, I don't know, it's something like that. So you got to come back to that. You got to have a team. Yeah. You got to make sure your team is and right. And you have to consciously do that though, right? Yeah. You're just saying like that, that's, that's not necessarily how you want to be right. and maneuver in the world, right. but you just feel like you have to because the environment is bringing that out of the you. The environment. And I think that, and, and that's why I kind of like say it again. Like, I think there has to be some sort of healthy balance. I think there is. I think we're, we're starting to be more aware of it and we're starting to be more conscious about, you know, in, in terms of like fat, feminine and masculine energy, like, okay, like it's okay to be soft. It's okay to be vulnerable. It's okay to feel bad or have a bad day. 
Um, the way I implement it would just be that, just like at work, yeah, I would be a little bit more masculine. And at home, just w unwinding, because like the real me is just like so much chill mm, than yeah, at yeah, work, yeah, you work. know? Yeah, I feel like <laughs> no, that, like that. that makes sense. Okay, I will say uh, my last question for you. Right now, uh, I'll face the question how I kind of did before. If you had to give somebody who wanted to start on their journey right now, their own fashion journey, maybe creating clothes or in some aspect, right? What would you give them advice in to do practically? Like something that they could start doing right now. Practice. Practice on creating your craft, whether it be learning how to sew. I just don't... Okay, this is my honest opinion. I'd rather you learn as much as you possibly can for yourself. Learning how to sew, learning how to pattern make, learning how to like promote yourself, market yourself, uh, social media, learn all that. Like learn all that. I don't want no one to come up to you and tell you how to do it, what ways would be best for you. No, you know yourself, you know your brand, you know where you wanna go to. Learn as much as you can. Don't let anyone take that away from you. Yeah. And just take it day by day. There's that's no good. rush. Mm. That's good. I love that because I think I think that's something that um, here I'm down. We've been doing like you know we we've if you guys been following us you know that we've been in this podcast for for quite little some while. time now, little minute now, and that's our thing too, right? It's just um, figuring it out, trying it, to figure it out, learning the way. And you know, even more than figuring it out, I think it's something that when you know we're coming together, right? Because you know you just you talked about that a little bit, but trying to put a team together and trying to make things work is. It's not the most difficult part, but the figuring that out part makes it a little bit easier. And coming together, um, you know, having these discussions and stuff also allows other people to see, like, yo, like, other people are out here doing shit, too. You get what yeah. I'm saying? They're just around you. And, and, what, and like I said before, I love that we're not big yet. You yeah. get me? Because everything is being documented. The, like, this conversation right here, like, when your brand blows up, People are going to be able to search come your name back. up, come back and see, <laughs> oh, this is how she started. This is how she thought at the time. You get me? Yeah. And so that, that you kind of leave your print already. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's the same thing for us because the content of our conversation, some of the things that we talk about, sometimes it's serious, sometimes it's dumb and it's funny. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. But it's us. Like, it, it's who we are. And I think that, you know, your brand is a good representation of who you are so far. You get me? Like, all the things that, like, I've seen on your site and stuff have been represented here because like, because even like on your vlogs i know you talked about the art of seduction and you did that book review you brought it up without me even having to tell you so i know that you're applying those things as such you know what i mean so i think that these conversations right here are powerful and they they will become bigger as you know we grow you know what i, I mean absolutely i think well, as we were mentioning earlier it's just um it's about community it's about like really like helping each other out learning who's around you like either, even the locals like you never know what your next door neighbor is doing, you yeah. know? Like, you always want to help, give out a hand, because you just never know who you're going to meet. You never know who you're going to come across to, and I think that's very powerful what you were yeah, saying. Yeah, it's weird. I find that very weird. Like, we don't we don't be talking to our neighbors, and we don't hang out with them. At least, well, me, yeah, because I've been living in my block forever, but, like, somebody that moves to a house, and they don't know their neighbors. They're just like, yeah, he doesn't even come out. Yeah. He doesn't even show himself. You might see him, hey, what's up, here and there, but... Uh -huh. No, but it's not. At least here, this is the vibe here. Ain't nobody be really fucking with their neighbors like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, and, and and that's just it, man. You know, um, st something about sticking together, uh, like Julia right here, right? Um, he brought that to my attention very big, um, cause sticking together is how you get shit done. Right. Like you know, you don't do shit by yourself. A lot of us don't ever get to do shit by ourselves. I mean, you usually need the help of somebody, or you know what I mean. For so. Sure. So, I mean, again, I understand you're in the journey, and I just hope that our followers tap into your thing and kind of see your growth. You get me? So, I'm very excited to see uh, where you're at in a year from now, two years yeah. from now, five years from now. Okay, Absolutely. Yeah. I'm very excited for the process. I'm very, I'm, I'm here for it. I'm, there, I'm not rushing. I'm not trying to be who I'm not. And the brand is going to be just way bigger than, than just me. Yeah. I don't, I don't even want the brand to have my face at one point. I don't. I want the brand to be it's much, thing. way much more than that. Right. Way much more. I don't. I, I wanted to be a point where like I'm just like in the background. Yeah. And like I'll just no, help. No. A lot stuff. of people aren't like that. A lot of, of people course, with their brand is like want to be up I, front yeah, and center. Yeah, for sure. Right? Up but front and center. I feel that like this is one of like the core values I believe in. I don't want to be plastered all over the my brand. I don't want to be that. I want it to be way bigger than me way bigger like 
whether it I be like your girlfriends, your mom, s- some stranger girl, like her wearing like I don't know the bustier, the lingerie that the company created for her. That's what I do it for. That's who I'm doing it for. I don't have nothing to do with that. As of now, I'm just putting myself there, and if I'm more than accepting any models, just throwing it out there. And, uh, <laughs> let me, yeah, I was gonna ask you, how do you feel like uh, hire people asking you for free stuff? How do you feel about that? Like people like that are bigger than you, obviously. How do you feel about them reaching out, or you reaching out to them, being like, "Oh, this is cool clothes. Yeah, I'll, just send me some stuff. Send me some merch. I got you. I'll, I'll, I'll you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, I hope you has it happened yet? Has it happened? It has. It has. Um, you know, I had created uh, like an underwear that is on my website that's on the shop right now, and I gave it to her so she can take some photos. Um, and she's a really great friend. She did an amazing job. She has a beautiful body. I think she did w- well with the photos. Uh, but I also believe that, you know, if I literally took the time to create something and I put it together for you. Um, I don't, I'm not sure about models yet, but like with just friends, personal friends in general, I don't really like to just give things out. What I gave you was just hard work and time. Mm-hmm. I value my time extremely, and I, I do want to get compensated for that, you know? So yeah. I guess it's just finding like that healthy balance because maybe models I would give it to them just because they're giving something back to me. It's not selfish. It's business, you know? Like, I have this, let's say, for example, a top that I'm going to give you. I need you to take pictures and send it to me. There's a transaction there. But when it comes to, like, oh, hey, just give me something for free, you know? Like, I'm your homegirl. And I'm like... I don't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't it's know. it's yeah. not. Is that the support? It, it, right. yeah, that, that's what it is. Like, I asked you this because yeah. I remember seeing a little interview on the Breakfast Club. Of this uh, fashion guy, this guy, he makes everything: wallet, shoes, wear, underwear, everything. Sia. And you know what it is? S I A. Yeah, S I A. And they tell us like, "Yo, I have a bunch of people." He didn't call him out. He's like, "Yo, I have a bunch of people hitting me up. Yo, send me some merch. I'll, you know, I'll push your shit." But he's like, "Bro, I'm not sending you nothing free, bro. Like, yeah. you gotta pay for this. Right. You gotta pay for this. You just because he's like, just because I'm black, I'm this black-owned business doesn't mean it's free, bro. Right? You gotta pay for my shit. You want to promote? Cool, pay for it. I'm not sending nothing out free. And I, I wanted to get your input because I never, I never had met somebody like you. So that's why I wanted to get how you feel about like people reaching out, like give me free that. shit and I'll help you out. I support that. Wait, I wait, think wait, 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 wait. Hey, I'm gonna need that money." You got my shirt on, you need to pay for that, George. Uh, <laughs> you know well, technically speaking, I bought the shirts no, that you worked I made on. It. Oh, I technically made it. speaking. I made it though. I, <laughs> no, I, I support that. I don't I don't see yeah. absolutely nothing wrong with asking that. That is yeah. your time, that is your dedication. You put your time into creating your craft, you better get compensated for it. I'm not I sure. support him How a thousand Twenty dollars? You want twenty dollars? Bitch. How much does shirt cost? Our, our friendship. Our friendship. Our friendship. friendship. <laughs> it's just worth our <laughs> friendship. Yeah, man. No, uh, yeah, man. I, I think this has been a good conversation. Um, I enjoyed uh, what you brought to the table for sure. It was dope. Do you want to plug anything in? Make your socials. Um. Well, yeah. Check out my website. It's www.melaniedayne.com. I post my blogs every Mondays and Fridays. I also have a YouTube channel where I kind of just show you real quickly my be- behind the scene content, sketches, uh, the process of actually creating the garment. So I have my YouTube channel, Melanie Dine. Follow me on Instagram at Melanie Dine. I also have Facebook, Melanie Dine. <laughs> Basically, in almost everything, yeah. Melanie Dine. All right, we'll cool. be we'll be waiting on the men's side of the clothes. I will I will definitely be waiting for that. I'm trying to see what you come up with. I actually if you need have, some help or input, yeah, anytime, you know you, we got three great guys. Do you here. know something? I have nothing but men asking me. Nothing, and I'm I love. At least you got a market in there. You can yeah. know you have like, hey, look, I got. Yeah, a little, and I, I, I get into I it. I can't ignore you guys because I have nothing but men just saying. So are you going to release something for men? And I think I love menswear. I, l- I think I would do so good at it. Because I'm a tomboy. I don't care what it is. I don't care what I'm it is. Some tank tops, heart. underwear, socks. Hey, man. If it's fire. The boxers. Yeah. <laughs> if, it's, if it's good, it's got a cop. I it's think a cop. I'm going to have to That's get true. into that. Yeah, for That's sure. What, what's your favorite fabric, George? 
Uh, so my favorite for fabric. Boxes, for cotton, boxes, just regular oh, ass uh, cotton. Poly- no, the little stretchy joint. I don't know what that's called though. It looks, it's like cotton and like two percent. No, not elastane. I don't know what it is, man. The little <laughs> sports one, the little Calvin Klein sports joints, man. Y'all know what that is, I man. Got you. I don't know what you're talking. About. All I don't right, know man. What you're well. About. <laughs> Uh, we thank you for coming. We appreciate you for being on the show, taking time to be here because I know you know it's busy schedule and you got stuff to do. So time is money for being here. Um, to you guys, thank you guys for watching. We appreciate you guys. Uh, we're gonna put all the inf- her info uh, down in the description below. If you're watching on YouTube, if you're listening to us on the podcast, she gave you those plugins. You already know us. We're I'm Down Podcast everywhere you can think of. Um, again, shout out to. Uh, Vi- zone 4 visuals again for helping us uh, produce this uh, we thank you guys for watching we appreciate you guys till next time this is I'm Down peace, peace.